we've got some new stuff to play with. Um, to replace that switch downstairs, uh, I went and picked up, well, I accidentally bought two. So I've got two 24 port ubiquity switches. One's a Gen 1, one's a Gen 2. The Gen 1, don't know what I'm gonna do with now. I think I'm probably just gonna return it or sell it because I don't have a use for it because I did end up picking up a Gen 2 for the same price. So um, let's pull that out of the box. We also got more toys. So this little guy, Unify mm, Flex Mini, I think it's called. Oh yeah, USW Flex Mini. This is gonna go upstairs and replace the switch that uh, runs my security and stuff like that because I don't need a 24 port PoE Cisco switch up there that generates a lot of heat and noise. So we'll do that, but what we're after, and I have a second one too because they're cheap and it's good to have another one. Uh, we're gonna take this thing out, so let's put this and this elsewhere. Let's see what's in the box. Oh, it doesn't open like I thought it would. So this is what we'll be replacing the 24 port Cisco switch. We've got 24 port gigabit plus we've got two SFPs. And this one has the cool little touch screen down here that uh, we'll play with. First things first, let's get this thing ready to rack mount, and then we will go downstairs and start pulling stuff out of the rack. All right, this poor guy decided to bite the dust. It uh, just uh, the lights all light up and then it just runs loud and never connects to anything. So that went out with the power outage. And we replaced it with this HP Pro Curve, I think. I actually don't know what it is. It's a HP 192048G. So it's a 48 port gigabit switch. The interface is awful. Ch do making making changes to this is awful. Um, CLI commands might be better, but basically we're going to take this out. We're going to keep this as a spare, uh, and we're going to throw in the 24 port uh, ubiquity switch. So that's going to come out. And what we need to do is we need to uh, get the ubiquity switch connected uh, and all the ports set up. Um, and then it should be just as easy as pull this one out, put the other one in, plug everything in, and everything should work. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is uh, get the ubiquity switch plugged in, and um, we're going to connect it to this this fiber uh, fiber uh, port here, and um, get it uh, at least connected to the uh, controller, and then um, then we'll start swapping everything over. Okay, new switch is right here. Stick it up here for now. Let's get the power cord ready to go. We'll plug her in the back. Hopefully this is visible. So we've got our PDU here. Not easy for me to do that on camera, but should do. Then we'll take our power cord and plug her in. And pull the little cover off the screen. And maybe I'll leave that until I rack it. And we're gonna take port one and plug it to port three over here. I just need to find an ethernet cable. I've got a bunch in here that'll do. And we'll do Port three, and we'll plug that into port one. And we should be able to get a DHCP address from the router. Now we'll go back to the computer and see if we got an IP and start configurating. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do when I'm gonna configure this, I wanna leave uh, this interface and everything the way it is, uh, because we do need the other switch connected so that we can connect to the controller software here. So when we go to devices, we will have another switch. Um, 
So what I'm going to do is on the HP switch, and this is what I was talking about, having a garbage interface, um, <laughs> we're going to set up, if I can remember how to do this, VLAN, and we're going to go to port detail, and we're going to take a port that's not being used, so let's use port 3, I don't think. Yeah, so we'll use port 3, modify the port, uh, untagged is going to go VLAN 10, apply. Now when we go to port detail, 3 should be on 10 untagged, so that gives us a, basically a switch port access on VLAN 10 if... We speak Cisco, so I'm going to save this configuration, and we're going to jump over to the server rack and uh, plug that switch in. So I'm back on the switch, just checking out, I'm uh, just waiting for it to connect. Uh, if I go to this little information dot, hopefully you can see, you can see that it's got a, an address of 10.10 .10, or 10.0.10.158, and then I can also see that it picked up the Unify controller. I can show you where that uh, setting is on the edge uh, edge router. And then, um, you see some other information, not important. So we'll go back over to the computer and see if it's connected now. Um, DHCP provided a, uh, an address. We have the controller. I just updated it to the newest version here. I was having an issue before where I wasn't able to see, uh, requests to onboard. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so uh, now we have the the switch showing up under devices, and we're going to adopt it. We'll let this thing adopt, which it seems to have done. And we'll start setting up some ports. So I've set up all the ports, I believe. I went through all my ports on here, and in the Unify software here, I went and set up each port. So in here, we have certain ports set up. Uh, one thing that's a little bit different is for things like um, VLANs and stuff like that, you set up a port profile. So I set up port profiles for all my VLANs, um, network isolation for each of the VLANs that I'm using, and then these port profiles. So uh, for example, if I have a trunk that has 10 as the native VLAN, or a trunk with 2 as the native VLAN, um, and then the rest of my ports, uh, I think we are we should be good to go. Uh, so I'm going to go start unplugging stuff, and hopefully everything comes back up without me having to do anything. So I think we should be good to go. Uh, I'm gonna The first thing I'm going to test is if this switch will be connectable uh, to the router. So let's pull this off. And we're going to take this SFP out, plug it into our switch. Uh, and then we also need this port plugged in so that I can connect to it with my computer. So let's do that first, I guess. So we're going to, I'm just going to unconnect this so that we're not using that anymore. Let's unplug this fiber and pull the SFP. So, we've got that, that'll go in here, and plug in, this is the one we want, so that should come up, and once I validate that works, um, we should be good to go. But uh, let me go back to the computer, double check that, and then I'll start pulling cables and swapping stuff around. So everything's working. We're gonna get this out of the way. We're gonna pull this switch out. And we're gonna swap everything over to this guy. So first things first, we're going to unplug this switch. And I'm going to unplug each of these. I'll probably speed this up so y'all don't have to watch. Okay. Let's get the 
power plugged in and start hooking everything back up. There we go. Let's throw our cover back on there and go check that everything is uh, everything's still working. I've got the switch here configured. I did have to do one thing. Um, since the way that I have my network set up, my, all my management is on VLAN 10, so I did actually have to go into uh, the CLI on this thing. One thing I did uh, note is that uh, this, it restarts your, um, or resets your, uh, your CLI password. So if you go in here and go to system settings and uh, controller configuration and device SSH authentication, this will show you what your uh, your new SSH login is. It's a it's the same user, but it's not the same as you log into the controller. Um, it gives you a different password. So just note that if you ever need to SSH to a server or to a device that um, you can't get to connect to the controller, um, but in here in the CLI. Uh, by default, there's only a few commands, like if you type help, it only shows you um, these. Uh, in the old switches, you used to go to um, telnet localhost, doesn't work in Gen 2s. So uh, basically what you do is if you double tap tab, it'll show you all commands, and then there's a command called uh, CLI. So if you just type CLI, it'll bring you into the... Uh, uh, CLI, and then you can do a question mark just like on Cisco switches or whatever, or the older ones, and it shows you all the all the things here. So basically, what I had to do was, um, so if I go show management uh, VLAN, I had to update this. So by default, the management VLAN is the uh, VLAN one. Uh, I recommend having VLAN one locked down as like a conf or, um, a provisioning network for Ubiquity stuff if you're doing that. Um, but basically all I had to do was go into um, configure and then uh, management VLAN. Um, and if you press a question, it'll tell you what to do. So VLAN and then 10. That's all I did there. Uh, and then my, um, my uh, controller was able to pick it up. So that uh, we have it. We have all the connections showing here. Uh, and everything's working again. My internet works again, and um, I can connect to all my servers and stuff like that. So uh, that's basically it for this upgrade. The next thing I'm going to do is replacing my upstairs switch, which is a Cisco uh, 2900 series switch, uh, with one of the um, smaller Ubiquity ones that you saw at the beginning. Um, so we'll do that next, uh, and uh, should free up uh, some power usage up there. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.